doing? I'm mewing. <laughs> what if I put this in there? Do it. I do. <laughs> All my friends watching. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Is I can't do it. Ready? Hey guys, welcome back to another Drag Boss video. Wow, there it is, as he took over. Why don't you finish up the episode? <laughs> Wait, restart. I know, we're just messing. <laughs> All right, I have to, I have to. <laughs> What's up guys, Tim also at Drag Boss Garage, back for another episode. You know, it's kind of funny, I was uh, reading about some things on Facebook and I came across uh, one of my videos and people were commenting on it. And somebody said, oh, I don't know what happened to that guy. He hasn't made a video in, in weeks. And, you know, <clears throat> it's probably not going to go much further. They have a short lifespan, those YouTube channels. So I don't, forgot your name, but I'm here to tell you that it ain't a short lifespan. Your channel's still up and running. Oh, and it's getting stronger, and there's a lot of big changes coming on. So thanks, Izzy the Boss Set, for being on this episode. It's been a while since I've made a video since I actually found this whole issue here. So I have to admit that it, it kind of acted like it didn't bother me, but I'll tell you deep down, it really hurt, it really pissed me off. And uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears went into that motor. And to have it taken out for that $10 piece of tube, that really pissed me off. So I got that off my chest, but the plan is I'm getting rid of uh, this oil pan here. This is the pan I ran for a long time. Nine quart, never had an issue. I talked to uh, Stan at Steph's. He said, send that to him in a new oil pump. They'll fabricate a brand new oil pan and pick up. I'll never have to ha worry about this again. You know, I was gonna use a, st a stock pickup and brace it and all that. And that's the thing, I never knew that you had to have a bracing on an oil pump pickup other than I have seen it on some, you know, I think big black Fords had a problem, but took me out. I've learned a lot of things from this and that's the important thing. No one got hurt, didn't wreck the car, didn't blow up the motor. Now I'll get this thing fixed. I'll be rolling out 920s. So maybe better. We'll see how all that goes. But I gotta give some big shout outs and then we'll get down to meat potatoes of everything. But <clears throat> people have donated money and I gotta give them the shout out and I appreciate that. Bill Fioretti, thank you, sent $500 to help repair this girl. You know, Daniel Wilson, 25 bucks. Michael Clanton, 25 bucks. I appreciate that guys. I really do, especially <clears throat> taking the effort to help Drag Boss Garage. So I had talked with Tom Molnar He's gonna hook me up with new cranking rods. I think we're gonna take it apart now and see what it looks like. Cause I'm trying to get this episode ready for when Lake Speed and I kind of talk about this with oil analysis. I just know now that the engine is just going through the traps way too high. It doesn't need to be going through it, whatever it is, 83, 84, 100, doesn't need that. It needs to be right about 79. And I bet you I pick up. So I'm gonna to have to change the gears to probably like 430s and it's got 471 in it now. So I had talked to my old engine builder, Bob Beach. If you guys remember Bob, he's 82 now and he volunteered to help me get this engine going. So I gotta get it torn apart. We'll be headed up to Bob Beach's and see what kind of stuff he has going on. In 82, him and I, we'll get this thing back together. I think it made horsepower then. Oh, big shout out to you, Brad Ford. He sent this t-shirt with a firing order of the Cleveland, 13726548, and you can see the picture of the Cleveland in the back. This is Dr. Ron's shirt. Thank you, Dr. Ron, for stopping by. I got a video made on him. And the J. Ross 85 Pro Stock Thunderbird that he's restoring. And the road trip here, and you'll see what that looks like. So I appreciate the merch. I got 2,000 stickers being made now with some pretty cool designs and some new changes coming up that you will never believe. But let's get going on this. So Izzy and I are gonna tear this thing down. I'll tell you right now, this windage tray is out of here. 
<clears throat> Darren Morgan said you lose horsepower with them. I checked here, the clearance between here is only like about 19 or 20,000. So that could have contributed to the harmonics and, and vibration. Bottom line, I'm not doing that. So we'll get this set up the way it needs to be. So let's pull this apart. Wrenches. Pop this guy out. So, I think I might have loosened this one. Right? Just a good little trick here. Put this wrench on here, right? Makes it longer, gives you the leverage without a lot. That's on. See what I mean? Yeah. Good little trick there. Get up here. Yep. Main thing is you don't want to be doing this and smash your knuckles. Hold it per, per, right there, right in line with it. Not pull. Not pull like this. Go. Push. Yep. Very tight. So you do it again. Pull. Yep. Now take them out. Don't drop them in the engine. And put them back on that table. All right. So let's pop off this oil pump, is. Just undo these bolts here that we loosened up and then put them in that bag over there. So we got I got this oil pump from Doug Garifo at Precision Oil Pumps and I'm gonna get another one. I always run a high volume. You guys run what you wanna do and do what works for you. But one thing I can tell you we've learned from this engine failure is that whatever I do for oiling on a Cleveland works. Or this engine wouldn't be going through at 8,400 and not burning up bearings. The only reason this thing failed is because of this. So, people have talked about putting on a dry sump or external wet sump. I mean, I thought about that. And I would like to do that maybe, but the cost at this point, I don't need it. This thing works, and I'm going to prove that it works, and that's I'm just going to stick with my combination that I've been racing for years. This front to rear line, I don't know if it made any difference because I've really had the same combo for so long. Did it help? Who knows? At this point, superstitious, I won't change anything in regards to that other than the design of that pickup. Yep, so let's pop these off. Now there's some screws or washers here. Yep, right here, so pull that up. Yeah, I can't believe it, this this kills me. People would ask, oh, is it the, the crank and rods, can you save anything? Hell no, man, I ain't wasting my time. Now I'm gonna, I'll take that crank to shaft tech and I'll have them look at it and clean it up. I bet you they can reuse it, but I won't put it back in this. I'll get a brand new crank and start over. So let's let's put this in the pan. Yeah, we should have gloves on. I like to have gloves. But see, this is gonna come up. Let me grab my glasses. There's a oil pump drive shaft there. When you lift it up, it's gonna wanna pull out. So go ahead and, and pull that up here. Ew. Nice. The no, that's just the gasket. But yeah, I don't know. I think this thing, just the harmonics, maybe there's an issue with the weld. Who knows? Bottom line is, I learned a lesson. Do we have any rags around here? There's a couple over there. A blue for FDA. Oops, why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so uh, all right, let's cover this up. I'm gonna stop and click over there. Right. Not that we're gonna take it apart anyways, but yeah, up and pop these Allen heads all off with that electric ratchet that I just got and put them in a bag there. Yeah, of course. Can't make you do everything. Mm -hmm. So I spent the uh, last weekend I went to Summit Nationals as a guest of Frank Iaconio. Frank, I appreciate your hospitality and also Fernando Quadra. I was a guest with them. I got great video. They let me ride the golf cart. We went up to the staging lanes right up there with my video camera or my phone. Yep. It was so cool. So you'll see some of that coming on. And he's going to do a live chat with me. We're going to try to schedule it hopefully within the next week. Yep. Doing good. Pull her out, baby. And on 7-12, July 12th, 
Greg Anderson's going to be on for a, a live chat too. So it'll be cool to kind of hear his story and Fernando's story and whoever else. Elite Motorsports, I talked with them. So they want to do an interview on Drag Boss Garage, so that should be good stuff. Yep. We're close to getting the transmission for Mrs. Drag Boss's Mustang. I can't wait for that. Either way, main prop issue is it didn't blow up and it didn't take out the head. You know, the, the engine, the quietest thing so fast is it makes so much power. I think because of the bottom end, it's those cylinder heads Darren Morgan did. Flowing at like, what are they? 385 at 600. So they're cooking. But I think I can, if I can go through the traps at 7,900, it's gonna make a huge difference in longevity. And I think it's gonna be faster. It's not, it, it, it makes max horsepower at 7,600. So it doesn't make sense to be going through that high. But I'm one of those guys, if it works and I've always had it and it seems to be the way, that's what I do. But I, I wanna kinda of change things around a little bit that fun nice what do you say is all right so pull off this windows tray now i got this from blake livingstone with an e so blake i'm not going to use it this time around i'm going to try without it and uh, see what it does but oh yeah that those those rods are cooked like salami look at that yep let's put that in here take out the oil pump drive shaft. Many people thought that was the problem for that video. But I run a billet drive shaft. Where do you think I got this from? Right. Precision oil pumps. They hooked me up with an oil pump drive shaft, the stud kit for this thing. A high volume oil pump, so I got to give a big shout out to them. That thing's serious, and it doesn't even look like it's stressed one bit. It's I know. Well, that's why. That's where all the oil is. Like Elena said, the same thing. So let's get the breaker bar. It's so preppy. Huh? It's so preppy. Preppy. <laughs> What's preppy about? Right here. We should have gloves on. So we got that windage tray off. Let's break loose these mains. A lot of people wonder, oh, I don't know why you're wearing, using a windage girdle. <laughs> a windage girdle. A lot of people wonder about using a main girdle on the block. You know, <clears throat> we'll take the socket off. Let me see one of those lap pads. Nice. That's what they use to soak up blood in the operating room. They work great for oil. But um, a lot of guys are like, well, I don't want to use that main girdle. All it does is hold the block together if it blows up. Well, that's good enough for me. 
I've been using it for, I don't know, 20 years and it seems to work good for me. And I always say the same thing on my channel, do what works for you. So whether you like to use it or not, that's up to you. Now, if there was a new Cleveland block and it had split, splayed main caps, just, let's, just relax. So we'll find it and look for it. I don't know where it is. So what? We find it. Wait. So just Please. go ahead, just go ahead and take the rest of them off. Don't do it again. Put them in the bag. We'll find it. It's coming apart anyways, but we'll find it. <coughs> um, and that's the thing about control, right? Oops. But <clears throat> yeah, if you had a good Cleveland block, you know, that you could go, you know, four 185 over, that'd be a dream block to have. I'm telling you right now. So the splayed main caps, can you imagine that? 427 cubic inches of just iron headed Cleveland. I'm telling you that thing would be a monster. Yep, so take them all off. Go. I think you're tightening, aren't you? No. Okay. Maybe. Well, I'll spin it and see if it's the right direction. Does that look like it's going right? Okay. Tighten it, ain't it? It's going this way. All right, then hit it. That's the right way. Yeah. Sorry. Excellent. Look at that thing. How are you going to find the one that dropped it? Well, we'll find it. Anyway, so let us get this thing apart. And uh, I was trying to think if there's more, more to tell. Versus I was just taking it apart. That's all right. Don't worry about it. It's a scale. It isn't going to come off. Okay. It's <clears throat> what, well, what's happening, look at, see how I had ground this down? Mm -hmm. So it's not totally perfect, like say this one is machined by the uh -huh. factory. So it gets stuck on there. So sometimes what you got to do is hold just a stud, then pull up and see, and loosen the nut. Oh. See what I mean? And where's the washer? Was it here? Uh -huh. Anyways, um, let's see how it's like taking a, a puzzle apart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This crankshaft looks beautiful uh, as far as like the counterweights go. Got it? <laughs> well, that's what, now when you're working on it, this ain't no funny <laughs> deal. You're working on the engine, putting it together, and you start doing that. Then you or you want to diagnose something or you take something apart, you can't be doing that. <laughs> Control. Control. Right, use your hand, it's all right, as long as you don't put your fingers open. What? Get your fingers caught in this thing spinning and tear it open. Even though it's not. Right. Work smart. Your hair's up, at least, in a way, that's good, but otherwise you get caught right in here. People have mentioned that. Go ahead. So the good thing about it is, I know what I got works. And now it's a matter of making it better and not doing that mistake again. I learned a lot of safety things. I'll probably end up with an engine diaper, maybe, because I, I don't want to see that type of failure, oil under the wheels. And I am getting a um, oil pressure light, 30 or 15 pound or something. I got some great video and pictures of plain insane Mercury Cougar. It's bad to the bone telling you so actually he offered me one but look in here at the rods they're all cooked every one of them the back are spared somewhat but they're still they were getting hot there's still some you can move them around okay so now here's the this is the main girl so we have that off now it sits on the main caps, but there's washers underneath it. So let's just pick it off careful. So don't drop in there, and then we'll get a better look, see? And that's how they fit on. 
clearance here for the rods. The rods are clearance from here, going back through here. Yeah, I think it's right there. Okay. okay. It is. All right. Well, we can get a magnet and get it. Bingo! That's what I'm talking about. So get a separate baggie down there in that drawer and put these spacers in there. I want them separate from everything else. So <clears throat> whatever crank I get, I'm going to have it probably done and uh, finished at Shaft Tech. You guys all like the way this crank looks. It's like, I'm telling you, the thing sparkles like a mirror. And that was called Omnichrome it was a shaft tuck so and it's actually a pretty cheap process to do yep let's put this guy in here So let's take a peek at the thrust here. The Blake Livingstone. Thanks, Blake. You just pulled him off like that? Yeah. I'll tell you, really, that ain't that bad. These were coated bearings by Calico. And I bet you it's been getting some cap lock too. Right there. But you know what? I might just have my own. Get my own caps. Make some. I know someone that has some. Makes these fillet caps for these. Interesting. Okay. Now see when you look at this, all the numbers go the same way. That's one thing to pay attention to, the main caps. They're all numbered. One, two, three, four. What's this one then? There it is. It doesn't say five, but it's the big, it's the last one. You can't put it up here. Makes sense? So nothing to it. <clears throat> right, because this is this is all underwater. Not the, you don't want it underwater. The oil is like probably right up to here, or it might even be under, I don't know what level it is. The goal is not to have this reciprocating assembly going through oil. It slows it down. Every time that, it's called windage. Every time that those rods hit there, it slows it down. So now let's take a look. Oh, hi, Elena. So now let's take a look at this number one bearing. Good hi, Elena. Hello. So let's see about this. You will probably yank That's on this cool. and get it to come out of there. Give it a little whack, just like I did. Whack on it and pull up on it. We're taking off the main caps. You can go over there. Yep. Pull up on it hard. Try to whack it right here. Yep. Are you guys taking there them you. out? Well, we're looking at the bearings to see how bad they are. I see you already did those. Actually, they're not even that bad, really. There's number one. Let's listen, guys. No, you did. You touched. Yeah. All right. Let's think about what we're doing. When you have a job at pan, we want to stick with it. Just pick, pick one of them. I don't care. Tap it like that. Pull up on it. I'm wearing yeah. one glove. Okay. And a towel on my Dad, is this yeah. towel used? No, but I, I, that's for polishing the car. Let's not um, use that for... What do you want? Any towels on yeah, here? yeah, here. She's trying to learn too. Yeah, why does it smell like gunpowder? Just burn oil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And you just have to pull some pressure on it. Can I clean this? Like, clean this? No, yeah. no, I already did. Well, we can clean out the oil. So, what's this one? What number is that? Two. Remember, all the numbers go on one side. Mm -hmm. Rods are out, I can tell you that. But actually, who knows? The crank's not. Bearings aren't even that bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, 
Yeah, bring that to the <laughs> I've seen that all. Yep. Can pull them off? I don't care. We'll take off a couple of these rods. All right, so whoop, whoop, whoop. so here's number four. Why don't you show them this, oh, Helena? Really good. That's the number four. Number four? Yep. Did you take oh, this one off? This? All right. Let me try to get these rods. I need to put my towel down somewhere so I can hold it. She took the spot one. Huh? Yeah, okay. Now, one That's thing I can four, tell you about, these it? are the Molnar rods with the correct Ford offset. So I use these. And I made a video of tightening them with bolt stretch. That's how I tighten these. I didn't torque them, I used bolt stretch. <laughs> and I had no problems. Right, yeah, put the number the way it goes. Yep. Four. No, no, no. That's right. Yeah. So, mm. that'll get you, huh? Oh, that scares me. You got it. This is an old socket, so it's got to be on there square. Oh, it smells like gunpowder, like fireworks. It doesn't. It smells like burnt oil. Just enough of all that, okay? <laughs> is he tall? So, loosen these up. We'll see what we can find as far as like. Yeah, they're tight, I'll tell you. Ah, small guys. Alright, so let's see. Switch over to that other gun. Yeah. Gun? Mm -hmm. Oh, screw that. Yep. Pop this guy off. You're going to waste the power right here. Yep. Yeah, does it have unlimited power? Guess what? Does that have an unlimited yeah, power? Yep. Or Go ahead and pop it, this one. You have to charge it. You have to charge it. Ooh. Oh, yeah, they smell hot. I'll Come smell. here and smell. Ooh. That's burnt oil. Uh, uh. That's burnt, man. They got <laughs> hot. So now Maybe let's see if we can get these apart. Ooh. Where's that little wackaroo? Wackaroo. Now, the, the deal with the molders rod bolts are they come at a, a certain length that's the bolt when you put it in there and, and tighten it down you're stretching the bolt x amount of thousands i forgot what it was it was like four to six or something and then what you can do is when you're done i had written down what they measured before and then when you're done you can remeasure them and you can see what the bolt lengthened hey dad yeah those things smell yeah. like old fireworks over like, if they like stay overnight like if like one of them shoot up in the air and then um and then it stays overnight Yep. Like you leave it there to like not make like a fire or anything. Right, no, I get what you're saying. And it smells like that. Yep, yep. That's creepy. Yes, it is. And to tell you the thing that's crazy is these aren't even that bad. I mean, they got hot, but the bearings are still. Yeah. Just get yeah, to the you copper. Think it's still hot? No. I've been here for about a month and I haven't touched oh, it, so I doubt it's still hot. But yeah, those rods are cooked. Look at that. Cooked rods. That's how hot it's they got. Here I'm thinking, I'm not sure why it's not running right. It's, it's running shaky, I kept saying to myself. Why is it shaky? And I haven't even emptied the fuel yet from the Q16. That's still sitting there from two months. Hey, Dad, do you think it smells like good powder? No. Mm, it does to me. Maybe okay. I have a, um, a stranger stuff that name. You know what I mean? Is I'm. Mm. Right, we know what you mean. Of course you guys do. Anyways. It's stuck on my. Well, let's just do this. Let's take it off. Oh. And get it off. Yeah, you smell. Mm -hmm. Whack this lady off here. Okay. Let's shut this one. <coughs> well, we gotta take these out. It stinks. Come on now. We're working. Yeah, that crank got pretty hot there, though. It smells hot. But it's so smooth. Like, it didn't yeah. even wreck it, see? It's got hot, but I don't know how bad that affects that. Dad, it smells hot as me. Ooh, that one smells. Let me smell. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
Oh, good. Watch this now. I don't know how, but my nose is working fine. All right, ready? Yes. I want to smell this one. What is this? Oh, I already smell. It smells like doo-doo. So well, now I can see where the bearing material came from. Can I show? Okay. Show them the blue part. Oh, come on. Come on, apples. Doesn't matter. Wah, wah. Okay, it's different colors. Oh, yeah, that's all hot. Blue part? Where? Inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. On the outside of the cap. Oh. See the different color? It looks like it got really hot. Mm. Sorry. Uh, there's not much more to say. So let's... Yep. Perfect. Show the outside, too. This, oh. part. this part? Yeah, right here. Yeah. See how hot that got? Yeah. So looks the crank shaft, we'll show them a picture of inside. We appreciate you guys being here at Drag Boss Garage. And hopefully you enjoyed this as much as we did, although not how we wanted to enjoy it, but we have a chance to make it much better. And I'm telling you, that thing's going to run 920s out of the hole with Bob Beach building it. Can't wait to race again. Yep. Whoa, I can't wait either. So I appreciate you being here. Stay tuned, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit also, hit that subscribe button. Boom. Stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage. <laughs> I like when you do your face. Boom! Well, there's Alana. She had to get in. There she is. And Daisy. So, yep. The boss sets. Thank you, guys. So here, let's look inside. There it is. So we all like that nice crank. It's a killer. I don't know if it's good the way the bearing surface is here. It's pretty blued out. Looking at the way it is, I'm kind of leery on that. And I'll just have a new crank. It's not worth messing around. I'm not going to risk nothing. I'll get another crank and make it look the same. Maybe even better. So, love that motor plate, Todd Fuchs. But that's it. So you can see now the deal. To be continued.